what's up survivors welcome back to another guide or is it no i'm here to do a quick little rundown of the patch slash update the new year's event is here so right off the back don't forget tonight guys there will be a 30 minute maintenance they will be fixing some display issues with the horses and unoccupied stables so if you've been having issues that is getting fixed hopefully tonight in the maintenance that is happening it will be a 30 minute maintenance it will start around 6 p.m eastern standard time so plan accordingly okay without further ado let me just pop that there i'm getting behind this a little late it's uh going on 11 a.m and this was all posted around 8 a.m so yeah i need to get this out there for you guys right off the back the new year's event is here so that right here tells me that we're probably not going to be getting a reset at launch. A little sad. Anyways, <laughs> so right off the back, between now, December 23rd, until January 3rd, okay, you will be able to do the New Year's event. The New Year's event will drop this exclusive item armor right here, which is basically glamour. That you will be able to wear i don't know if it's just going to replace either your undergarments or it's going to be able to go over top of your current gear whichever this is going to be in your uh glamour thing i forget what it's called there's a palette if you open up your inventory the top corner like right around here there's an option you can toggle on basically undergarments and glamour so basically this is what's going on there will be fireworks lanterns and all kinds of stuff during the event <clears throat> so Right here, they talk about, you know, when it's going to happen. Uh, there will be lanterns that will be dropping. You'll be able to access them to do different kinds of stuff. Uh, doing treasure maps uh, by defeating the people during treasure maps for the New Year's event. Um, you'll be able to get endless knots and firecrackers and stuff. Uh, the fireworks, there'll be boom papers, uh, outshine flowers, 100 flowers, all kinds of different types of stuff that's going to happen. Um, the guild robber scrolls. Uh, will include different types of things from the tiger outfit, which is this right here. Uh, some kind of cloud thing, mug pies, all kinds of weird stuff. Different types of banner things that you'll be able to do. So you should be able, I think you can get a new type of banner as well. There'll be a new type of bow skin, I believe, and something else. Uh, there will also be things called turtle coins of white metal, which you can trade in for about 100 copper. Um, then there would be like the Chinese dumpling, which would be a food type of item, uh, basically similar to the meat and vegetable item in the game. So yeah, restores fullness and toxicity, all kinds of stuff. All right. Yeah. Here's the bow I was thinking of. There'll be new level 10 and level 30 weapons. So nothing crazy guys, just, you know, low tier weapons, maybe just for funsies, just for looks. And then obviously right here, they show off the outfit. So you need to collect, keep in mind. You have to complete, complete the daily quest to achieve the fragments for the New Year's outfits. You have to unlock this outfit after collecting 30 fragments. You have to collect 30 fragments. Okay, guys, you get five a day. Do the math, which means you have to be on and doing it as, as long as if this is the only way to get it. If this is the only way to get it, it's your daily. It takes seven days to gather 30 fragments. The event is between the 28th. <laughs> Or they like to say the 24th, but uh, the 23rd for them, the 22nd for us, most likely. So if you're UTC, it's probably 23rd to 20 or 23rd to the 20, the third. And then us, it'd basically be technically the 24th or something weird like that. I think it starts late tonight or it starts after maintenance or something. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Because I know you can do the quests, your daily quests, and you're getting the thing right now. But this always confuses me, like, when they do stuff like this, and then they do stuff like this. <laughs> the 24th. 23rd. <laughs> it's just like, okay, which one is it? Pick up your minds. Alright, so, remember, you have to get 30 fragments, which means it's going to take you exactly, what, is that six or seven days? Can't do math right now. Alright, then there's also snowballs that you would get. Snowballs, when you throw them at people. Here you go. You get increased HP stamina regeneration for 20 seconds by throwing a snowball at somebody. So it's basically a healing item. Interesting. Probably not very good healing item, but a healing item nonetheless. Also, starting tonight, December 23rd at 1600 UTC, which is like, I believe, 8, 9 o'clock for us at night Eastern time. 
there will be lanterns that will start falling out of the sky. These lanterns will have boxes underneath of them. There will be small boxes and large boxes. Getting these small boxes and large boxes right here. You can open these up for different things like the coins that give you basically 100 copper for each coin you find. You'll be able to get quenching essences and black stones, which are used for end game quenching as well. Um, and then they talk about here, like the lanterns, the endless knots, and the firecrackers again, which by the way, if you wanna know how to light the firecrackers, you need a torch. So make sure you have a torch on you while you're doing the event. Um, firecrackers, again, this basically just takes us back to what they talked about up, up top. You can ignite them in all different types of stuff. I mean, I'm not sure what this is. I think that's a banner right there. I think this is a banner. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't feel like slaughtering it. All right, and just to let you guys know, in the meantime, something to do with the cloud piercing arrows. You will also have a chance to get cloud piercing arrows by defeating high tier warriors on the map. You can shoot these cloud piercing arrows into the sky to summon a lantern randomly. So it doesn't have to be at nighttime. All right, so when you defeat high tier warriors, I'm pretty sure they mean elites or dragons. You will have a, get a cloud piercing arrow. When you shoot that cloud piercing arrow into the sky, you can summon a lantern at any time. There you go. Also, lastly, they are telling us one more time. If you guys were waiting for the tank armor for the elephants and rhinos, they have been delayed due to optimizational issues that they're having. They're trying to fix them and make them work better, performance, all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned. It'll be here shortly. Hopefully not too much longer. At least it gives my clan a little bit more time to actually get one. We've been actually struggling on getting all the fodder we need ahead of time. Like, even though we're like 30 something members, we really don't have a lot of people that actually do farm the fodder, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. It's a PVE server, so it's not like we're in desperate need to do it. All right, so, yep. All right, I think that's everything. And they basically just say happy hunting, you know, enjoy the game, blah, 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 blah. Okay, guys, so hopefully, and I feel bad for everybody else, guys. I am sorry to announce the game is still not on sale. So, at least on Steam, I don't know if they have any plans to change that another way or something, but uh, currently the game is still not on sale. Now, they are still working with, the, you know, the whole court situation. There has been some improvement in that area, but nothing significant to really announce in the terms of when the game will be back on. Um, there was a court order injunction, basically, for Snail Games to basically stop from telling myth of empires from selling the game on sale due to the lack of evidence currently that way that you know the company could make more money to help you know to basically continue fighting the whole thing in court um i'm gonna be honest here i'm a little biased more towards myth of empires right now because well the game is amazingly made even though it is quote unquote as snail games like to say based off of their coding i mean let's be honest they did a better job making this game than snail games did making freaking arc so <laughs> whatever i guess but in the news of the whole coding thing just a heads up um there has been some development in the code fight argument that the code the reason why it quote unquote as the way ag has announced it the only time that they've ever actually openly admitted anything about the code was when they said that the code was based off the same exact game coding that ARC was based off of, which has nothing to do with the ARC coding. Because ARC was based off of another game's coding when it was built. This game used the exact same one because most of the people who were working on this game also worked on ARC, so they were aware of the coding from that previous game, which was open source, which was allowed to be used. So there, that's why there, uh, quote unquote, there were similarities. Other than that, there's still, there's still no argument. Like Wildcard, aka Snail Games, is literally just trying to throw everything they can under the sun, and hopefully one of them stick. They've went as far as trying to say that Myth of Empires belonged to them because it was their coding. Like that's even one of the arguments they're trying to do. We'll see what happens. Honestly, I think Snail Gaming is just literally just throwing stuff at a wall and hoping like something will stick. And I'm not the only person who has said that. There have been other YouTubers that have also said the same thing. And I would have to agree with them because watching this from the sidelines and having some basic knowledge of coding, 
and basic knowledge of how the law works when it comes to coding and copywriting. Snail Games is desperate, which means they don't have a case. They're just trying to get a case built by throwing everything they can at AG in order to stop the production of Myth of Empires. Honestly, I don't think that's going to happen because I think Myth of Empires is fully aware, or at least the staff company behind it, as well as the developers behind the game, are fully aware of the fact that they did nothing wrong. Now, if they did do something wrong, I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> but I honestly feel like they wouldn't be putting this much effort into every day, throwing out maintenances, doing events, all this stuff, if they were in any way, fashion, or form under the inkling of an idea that they actually did steal the source code. And again, that's me being biased because why put so much effort into a game that you're basically making no money off of? Think about that for a second. Why put so much effort into a game to fix it, to do events, to keep the population active if you did do something wrong? There's no money, there's no profit in it at this moment. That they're literally doing it for free. Think about that for a minute. They can be silent, they could be everything under the sun, guys. They can deny, deny, deny. They can refuse, refuse, refuse everything that Snail Gaming asks of them. But at the end of the day, they're still developing and fixing the game for free. With that, guys, enjoy the New Year's event. And hopefully the game will be on sale so the rest of you guys can come play this awesome game that by far is probably one of the best launch early access survival games I've played in a while. Considering I have over 8,000 hours in ARC, I can say that comfortably. <laughs> Anyways, take care, guys. Happy hunting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.